Hey everyone, it's time for another live look at the astrology. My name is Katie Sweetman, and this is your look at the astrology for November 21st through 27th, 2022. As you may be able to see, um, this is the a spe special parental uh, uh, edition. Here I am uh, visiting my dad for the holidays. So I hope you're all well. Uh, we are at the end of Scorpio season as I record this. So we are coming out of this sort of alchemical space. Yes, Scorpio is a sign that uses the element of water. Um, it's not the water of cancer. It is the water of intimacy, vulnerability, the water that tests us, that reveals. Uh, it really is a water that tries to move us. And maybe we've moved, and I mean that metaphorically speaking, um, over the past four weeks. We are now at the end of eclipse season. You know, for me, eclipse season really is within the lunar month that the eclipses open up. Although we start to see eclipses even you know a month and a half, a month before the eclipse and even after the eclipse. So even though we are leaving eclipse season and we are going into a new lunar month this week, we may see a little bit of that eclipse energy even five, six weeks later. So Scorpio season, it brings us right to the threshold. It brings us to the fire of Sagittarius season. Actually, last week, this is where I, I write things. I put all this information down in a Google calendar, and sometimes I write it down wrong. I wrote that Sagittarius season began on the 20th. It actually begins on the 22nd. I'm so sorry, Scorpio. Kind of just shortchanged you two days. Um, yeah, there's something about the sun at 29 degrees of Scorpio or any planet at the 29 degrees of Scorpio. It's a very potent, powerful charge degree, which we'll circle back to in a moment. And as I was alluding to a few moments ago, it's going to be Sag season. So we are stepping into the last quadrant of the Zodiac. We are starting things over with another fire sign. This is the last fire sign. It's the fire of revelation, adventure, opening up our eyes, seeing things differently. Then we have a Sagittarius new moon on the 23rd of November, just in time for Jupiter to go direct in Pisces. And that's pretty much like the big headliners this week. You know, I, I, if you're in the United States, it's a holiday week, you know, we celebrate Thanksgiving on Thursday, uh, maybe you're with family, maybe you're hiding out from family, I do not blame you, um, and trying to navigate this complicated time as you do. So again, my name is Katie Sweetman, I'm an astrologer and psychic medium here, well not here, but there in the New York City area, here is Maryland, where I'm originally from. I'm originally from the Washington, D.C. area, spent 16 years in Brooklyn, and then in 2021 made a switch just across the river to New Jersey. But here I am. So if you're watching live, as always, let me know where you're watching from. Maybe you're in Maryland like I am. I know I have some clients in the Baltimore area. And uh, if yes, if it's your birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Sag, and happy birthday to the Scorpios who had their birthday at the end of the season. Me too. My birthday was the 17th. So yeah, just pretty, pretty chill, chill birthday. But, uh, you know, I am Sag rising. So in a way, I kind of get to <laughs> glom on to Sag season and uh, enjoy that breath of fresh air and fire after that really heavy waters of Scorpio. And as you hear me say every week, the astrology is 50%. You are the other 50%. I want you to participate with your astrology. Let it reveal something inside of you. Let it open up. For me, astrology is a beautiful framework, this symbolic archetypical framework or language that is at least 5,000 years old. But you are not 5,000 years old and you are a spirit in that living in that uh, astrology of your birth chart and how do you grow and evolve through it so let's look at the astrology of this week of november 21st through 27th 2022 so as i was saying as we as i did my little my intro um we have the end of scorpio season which i was saying i, I tried to accidentally shortchange you all last week. So yes, the sun 
leaves Scorpio and goes into Sagittarius on November 23rd. So as we start the week, we're coming to the end of Scorpio season. There's something magical, potent, um, maybe even a little confrontational about that last degree of Scorpio. Kind of like a personal joke that I make to myself. It's like no good ever happens at 29 degrees of Scorpio. I'm kidding. It's just this part of the sign where we are, you know, we have to learn, let me rephrase that. When you get to the end of a sign, Scorpio, Sag, etc., there is sort of this what have you learned energy to it. Why? Because 29 degrees is the energy of Saturn. Saturn takes 29 and a half years to go around the sun. It's not a coincidence that we have Saturn as the last classical planet, 29 and a half years to go around the sun. We have 30 degrees in each of the zodiac signs. So there is this correlation and Saturn is like for Scorpio season or not Saturn in this case, sun at 29 degrees of, of Scorpio. What have, we, what have we learned? What have we learned in a season that has that was opened up with a Scorpio solar eclipse on October 25th? What have we learned with the south node of the moon in Scorpio? And that south node of the moon is a point of release and endings and sort of these, this deep soul searching that can happen in Scorpio. And, the, and sort of the beauty, but sometimes the bittersweet pain of Scorpio is that we learn something. We learn something about ourselves. Uh, we see something. We put light where there was previously dark. That's the deeper emotional, spiritual, psychological work that we do in Scorpio. And it is the decay, I know that's a heavy word, but it's the necessary decay that allows us to open up for new life. That's the one of the functions of Scorpio. It's also a season that pulled back the veil. Uh, it's so we get, you know, a lot of intuition, uh, the feeling that, you know, maybe our passed on loved ones are not that far away. So in this sort of very fine space between Scorpio, the water of Scorpio and the fire of Sag is something. Water comes before fire in astrology. The water signs precede the fire signs. We think to Pisces, which is at the end of the zodiac, it precedes Aries, the first fire sign. So there's a sense of through the loss and endings of Scorpio, we have a rebirth in, in Sagittarius, which is a fire sign. It's not necessarily a rebirth of life. It's a, it's a rebirth of how we see things. It's you know, Sag season, you know, the sun going into Sag on November 23rd, no, November 22nd. Sorry, I got that wrong. November 22nd, the sun goes in the Sag and the sun steps into the sign of fire, the fire of awareness, consciousness, knowledge, truth. Sagittarius as the fire, it's meant to be like the torch that inspires us to be better, to search, to explore, to question, to see our world. And I say to be better, and maybe this is a little bit of a spiritual comment, Sagittarius is the sign of philosophy and religion, and religion in its best light is a framework, it's, an, it's a worldly or earthly or man-made framework that helps us to try to be better people, be better humans on this planet. It gives us a sense of path. And that's the thing with Sagittarius is that it's the sign of the journey, of the path, of seeking and, and the quest. And if you have a strong Sagittarius in your chart, or if you have the moon in Sagittarius, or even if you have a lot of ninth house placements in your chart, you are somebody who's always seeking and searching for answers. And this is a season for each and every one of us to seek and search for answers. There has to be more. I was having my, my Saturn masterclass this past weekend, and we we're starting to come to the end of our time together. And I was talking a lot about the agita of why, why? I mean, why? Why we this, this word that we keep using to try to ask ourselves questions. Why, why does this keep happening? Why me? And that's sometimes where we can get caught in this loop between Scorpio and Sagittarius. Why? Why? Kind of getting pulled into the dark why. 
of Scorpio. But we need that. Why? We need to understand um, not just our world, but try to understand ourselves and the world. And Sagittarius is the sign that brings us to convictions, a sense of right and wrong. What do we stand for? What do we believe in? Do we believe in nothing? Believing in nothing is believing in something, believe it or not. So this is a season where we have to sort of try to make sense of things after perhaps everything we went through during eclipse season and beyond. What's our faith like? Do we still have faith? Is our faith stronger than ever or is it a bit, you know, battered? Do we need to come back to ourselves or come back to some sort of philosophical or even spiritual framework to try to understand things? Do we need to cultivate wisdom or even cultivate wisdom through other people in our lives? Sagittarius, you know, through its ruler Jupiter, it's a sign of the teacher. It's a very different teacher than the teacher of Gemini or the teacher of Virgo. It's like the guru, which I, you know, that word's a little complicated, but we need teachers in our life, people that give us a framework, kind of whether it's an ethical standard or a moral standard or a spiritual standard. We need teachers or even, you know, on a humanistic level, we need teachers. But of course, that energy has two sides to it. We can have the teacher that really does uplift and inspires and motivates us to keep asking questions and keep searching why. Or we have the teacher that tries to impose their moral framework, their philosophical framework, their spiritual framework on us and we can get lost and imprisoned. And it's through Sagittarius we have to ask questions and discover what we believe in, but also discover ourselves in that and, and have it not be somebody else's framework that gets put upon us. So it's a it's a beautiful sign, of course, just like Scorpio, just like any of the signs, there's two sides. And we have to sort of keep being curious with Sagittarius because the flip side of Sagittarius is it's my truth. And that truth is the only truth. This is the only way we can do it. And that's, that's the fire of fundamentalism. That's when we, we can't have the curiosity of Sagittarius. This season draws upon Jupiter, its ruler, but Jupiter is over at the very end of Pisces. So if you remember, I think it was, yeah, the end of October, October 28th, Jupiter dipped back into Pisces after this sort of, you know, May, what, six month, five month foray into Aries. And Jupiter actually is in its home sign in Pisces. Jupiter rules both Sagittarius and Pisces. Maybe you're scratching your head and you're like, wait, what about Neptune? I use traditional rulers. So here's, well, this is one of the reasons why I use traditional rulers. This reason shows us the duality of a planet's function. We have the search for truth and wisdom in Sagittarius, and it's an earthly search. I'm searching the world. I am going to school, university, college. I'm getting on a plane. I'm going, you know, learning about theology, or I'm, you know, consulting with the wise people in my life. It is an external search for truth and wisdom. But in Pisces, it's an internal search for truth and wisdom. And at the end of the road, and Pisces really truly is the end of the road, the answers come from within. And these are answers that we can't find in a book. We can't find through somebody else. We have to discover them within ourselves. So we're, we are experiencing that duality during this Sagittarius season. Jupiter in Pisces is spirituality and mysticism, which is the other side of Sagittarius, which is religion and sort of that moral framework that can be handed to us. We need that inner search. We need the meditation, reflection. We need the retreat of Pisces. And it's sort of those moments where we really feel something. I'm sure, or maybe not, but I'm sure a lot of you have had a dream or a vision or just an inner knowing. And I could maybe rationally, you know, question you like, how, why do you believe that? You know, because you had a dream, like you can't prove that that's not true, but it's true for you. And that's the only thing that matters. And that's sort of that beautiful energy of Jupiter in Pisces. 
Jupiter is turning direct on November 23rd at 28 degrees of Pisces. It's in the ballpark of Neptune. So we really can't look at Jupiter and Pisces without really uh, seeing the influence of Neptune and Pisces, even if it's, you know, a little bit of a wide orb, but I, I tend to use really wide orbs in my worth, a little bit of a technical point. Um, but yeah, we've got Jupiter and Pisces. It's turning direct on November 23rd. And it's infusing that energy with the Sagittarius new moon on November 23rd, same day. So we have a Sag new moon at one degree. So just after the sun arrives in Sagittarius, we have a new moon and we have a new lunar month. A new lunar month opens up a four week chapter for us to sort of live our lives within. That's the thing about astrology. It's just time and the energy of time and the structure of time. And we really see that structure of time play out through the lunar cycle. It's not the solar calendar. It's the lunar calendar that has the power. And so we have this new moon and a new moon means new beginnings, renewal. This is uh, in contrast to the Scorpio new moon and solar eclipse of October 25th. We are leaving behind the energies of Scorpio. We are going into Sag and over the next four weeks, which is the duration of the lunar month until the end of December, if I believe my astrology correctly, we are looking at things through the lens of Sagittarius. Sagittarius can be a little bit navel gazy, or it can be really wanting to go out there and try to find, find answers. And maybe travel is a big emphasis for you over the next four weeks. Um, maybe it's just a time to really educate yourself and to read books or to focus on your um, higher education, or maybe it's just to get very worldly. It's one of the things I love about Sag that it, it sort of takes from all these different places, like, uh, you know, whether you want to have like this cuisine or listen to this music or go to this place, you know, Sagittarius just wants to try everything. It's like jumping Gemini on steroids. So, you know, speaking of Gemini, we got Mars in Gemini. So this is a Sag, Sag season that's playing off the energies of Mars and Gemini. So as we go into December, we've got this energy, you know, sun opposite Mars, and it's all about ideas and information, a lot of communication, a lot of sharing, a lot of ideas, a lot of debates. Sagittarius loves to debate, it loves to pontificate, it loves to litigate. Um, and then Gemini just likes to kind of just talk and explore and to try and to bounce off of if you ever had a conversation with a Gemini, it's like boom, 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 from topic to topic. So it's going to be a very different energy. You know, Sag is fire, Gemini is air as we go through the next four weeks. But then again, we do have Jupiter in Pisces all the way until I think it goes into back into Aries on December 28th. Um, you know, so we do have this sort of watery, emotional, you know, what does it all mean? Why am I here? <laughs> Who am I? These deeper, let's say, existential questions that Pisces brings to us. And that's really what it boils down to. It's like, for all our debating and excitement and new ideas and exploring and bouncing back and things back, you know, back and forth between Sag and Gemini, you know, at the end of the day, Jupiter is still in Pisces. What does it all mean? Or I realize that's a big question. And maybe that is the question for our lives. What is it? What does it all mean? And so we've got to really do our internal work. You know, we do have, I think I started to talk about Neptune and, and Neptune dissolves the boundaries between this world and the next world. But whenever Neptune is an aspect to a planet, that planet, we have to, it's a spiritual work, that planet. And so let's say we are working on our faith over the next four weeks. We are working on our spirit, our soul, and that sense of meaning and purpose to our lives. And how do we contribute and how do we exist in this great big world? So those are the finer points of the Sagittarius new moon. It's it's really the the, the, the big the big emphasis this week on the on the 23rd. I think there's a you know kind of Venus and Mercury aspects to Chiron, but, but that's the that's the nitty gritty. So 
let's look at the astrology. I know I see some familiar faces in the live chat. Hello. Um, let's see. I know I'm back. I'm back in Maryland. Um, let's look at the astrology for November 21st through 27th, 2022. Uh, going through the 12 signs, just your friendly reminder, listen for your sun and rising. There are these two points of data that sort of helps us to see the bigger picture. You need to know your exact birth time to know your rising sign. Um, just some just some fun facts. So let's start with Aries. So Aries, this is a season, Sag, the new moon, that's really trying to open up your world. Keep in mind that Mars, your planet, you know, it's, it's spending that really long time in Gemini. It's not going to leave Gemini until March 25th of 2023. But you add the Sag energy into it, and it says that the next four weeks are dynamic. It is a seeking and exploring, looking for answers, trying to get back to what you stand for, what you believe in, what's your truth, focusing on education. And maybe it's just been a bit of a hard time, especially, you know, coming out of those Scorpio eclipse energies, and you need to reassess what everything means and, and what you believe in and what you stand for. That said, these two signs, Sag and Gemini, for you, it's you, you've got a lot to say. You've got a lot to share. Uh, travel, again, education is going to be a big focus over the next four months, but we cannot forget that Jupiter is in Pisces. It's a little bit of a quiet influence for you, uh, Aries, and, and, I, and maybe in a way Jupiter has been laying a path for Saturn's arrival in Pisces in March of 2023. Yeah, lots going on in March 2023. And the quiet side of Jupiter and Pisces is that there are these deeper existential questions that you've been asking yourselves, or maybe even popping up in conversations or popping up in dreams and sort of how do you transcend the mental mind and start to connect to the intuitive mind, uh, Aries. And when Saturn goes into Pisces in March 2023, you're going to enter a three year phase of really going into that deeper spiritual material and trying to pull back the veil between this side and the other side. So like I said, Jupiter is in a way opening the, the doors uh, and, and bringing you to something that come next year and over the next few years really start to take root and take hold. Taurus. Taurus. So Sag is your eighth sign. So this is what I affectionately call be being in the eighth room. Um, what does it mean to be in the eighth room? Well, the eighth room is a space. You know, uh, Sagittarius is your eighth sign. And the eighth room is this space where we are tested by life. And you're like, oh, no, Katie, I don't like that. Here's the thing. We all have these moments where we have to do the inner work. It just so happens that Sag season is your is your time. You are coming off of some big eclipses. Maybe they haven't quite really revealed themselves to you. But this is a you know four week period where it is about digging in, asking yourself the hard questions, having difficult conversations, um, Maybe even focusing on themes of intimacy, vulnerability, power, control, rebirth. And it's this time, just like we had in Scorpio season, being in the eighth room prepares us, moves us forward. And that's the thing about the space and even the element water, even though for you, you have fire here, is that water or the space of water allows a movement, allows us to move forward in our lives, allows us to release something. So it might be a little bit of a poignant time and one that is you know, asking you these bigger you know, existential questions. The eighth, your eighth sign is Sagittarius. You have Mars in your second sign. This is also about money, income, finance, investments, wills, inheritance, uh, states, benefits. I'm a Scorpio. I don't mind talking about financial planning for the future, especially state planning. But from a traditional astrology standpoint, the second sign and the eighth sign are about money your money, the money that you share with, with, a, with a spouse, uh, money that comes from an estate, the money that comes from a family member. And so this is a time for you to really think about value and worth, your material life, what you want to invest in, and what is you know, really truly important to you, Taurus. 
um, <clears throat> Gemini. So Sag season is your season to focus on relationships. So you've got this new moon on the 23rd and it's bringing in the energies of Jupiter direct. Jupiter is in your 10th sign. So this might be a bit of a pivotal month for you. It is about relationships and other people. It's about duties and responsibilities, maybe even your duties and responsibilities to a relationship or even your duties and responsibilities in the world. This is with this energy of Mars and Gemini. Hey, you're, you're Gemini. This is Sagittarius new moon and also Jupiter in your 10th. This is a time to get really real about some things and sort of make some decisions. And, you know, maybe it's a, it's a turn of the corner for you, Gemini. This that said, this is a season or rather a new moon to focus on relationships. And if you're not in a relationship, uh, certainly this is a natural time in your personal zodiac calendar for somebody to come into your life. It might be a little, th I don't, not thorny, but might hit on some things because Mars is in Gemini. So it's Mars is very self motivated and self directed in your sign right now. And it's like you with Mars and your sign for so long, yes, it's retrograde until January. It's all about you. It's all about what you want. But when the, the, the new moons in Sagittarius, you know, how do you learn to negotiate and to compromise and to connect with other people and to figure out the balance? Uh, Jupiter is making an aspect to Neptune. So this, this sort of brings in this energy prominently. And there is an element of spiritual work over the next four weeks. What does that even mean, spiritual work? Spiritual work means that there's something deeper that we're trying to work out on a mental human ego level. It doesn't make sense, but on a deeper spiritual level, it makes sense. And we're trying to refine something and to make something better. And Neptune in its best possible way can talk about truth, meaning, uh, compassion, healing, and also letting something go. Um, it's cancer. I know I say it every week, cancer is like counting off the days until Saturn leaves your eighth room um, on uh, March 7th of 2023. So that such sag, sag season for you is a season to focus on your human life. Yes, you are a human being. Last time I checked. Human life means the stuff that we have to do in order to keep our human lives running. Pretty sure each and every one of us has to brush our teeth, uh, eat our vegetables, uh, get some fresh air, get some exercise, uh, make sure that our life sort of has a framework, a system, a schedule. It doesn't sound very glamorous, but it's so necessary. And so this is the season for you to get really grounded into the minutia of that human, that human stuff that we all have to do. So how do you focus on your human life? Do you need to get a jump on the new year and, and resolutions? And I realize that word, people don't like that word, but there is this time that we have to kind of reset and to make healthy initiatives and maybe such season for you in advance of Capricorn is a time for you to make these healthy initiatives. Jupiter is in your ninth. So there's this interplay between sort of getting into the details of your life, organizing your life, starting a project, even working or focusing on work, but also these larger themes of, you know, what do you stand for? What do you believe in? Like, what's the compass point? Maybe that's the thing about focusing on your human life. You need to sort of look at like, what does it all connect to? What does it all mean? Is this important? Isn't this not important? I'm pretty sure getting eating your vegetables is important but hey you do you so f focus on health and wellness focus on maybe how beliefs and how you see things can show up either positively or negatively in health and wellness uh, that said Jupiter turning direct in your ninth there are these themes about truth and meaning belief faith legal matters, maybe even because the ninth is about legal matters and even spirituality and religion. Leo, how'd you fare during eclipse season? I know it was a little bit of a heavy handed eclipse season for you, Leo, because why? Because you know, Scorpio is your fourth sign and the fourth sign is like the base and foundation of your astrology. And you know, it, it, this is a what was a was this an eclipse season that really maybe picked at something deep and maybe deep about home, family, the past, childhood, 
your inner core. And so you know, maybe maybe need a hug right now, Leo. Um, but that Sag, Sag season, um, Sagittarius is a fire sign. Hey, Leo, you are a fire sign. So you need that, let's say, infusion of fire after all the heavy emotional living, lifting of eclipse season. So Sagittarius is your fifth sign. So in a way, it picks up on the energies of Leo. Leo is so much about the self. And let me explain, because sometimes we, we hear that in pop astrology, and we're like, oh, Leo is just so full of themselves. No, Leo is the sign of the sun in its best possible light, no pun intended. It takes the spark, Aries, Aries, the first fire sign, and it makes the light of the sun and then the light of the sun through each and every one of us. We are our own prism and the sun, our sun, or let's say the sun through each of the signs or the sun lighting up each of our astrology charts. It's like a kaleidoscope. It's like a prism of light. And this is where you get individuality and identity and persona with Leo. So it's like we, it's a, it's a season or our sign rather, where we really get in touch with what makes us, us. There's eight, literally 8 billion people on this planet. I think of as of, as of last week. Um, and there's only one you. I know it sounds so simple, but we forget that. So Leo, that's something that's very much a part of your sign. And even if you're like, oh, Katie, I don't feel like a typical Leo, I'm kind of shy. No, be you. I'm not saying like be on stage or be Oprah. I'm just like, take what makes you you and nourish it this season. Sag is your fifth sign of passion, joy, fire, creativity, searching for answers and meaning and really showing off what makes you you. This uh, full, moon, full moon, this new moon does play off of Jupiter in the eighth. So how do you look at that interplay of the shadow self? And so the part of you that doesn't want to shine your light and how do you have the faith and, and sort of the confidence, Leo, to, to be yourself, however you want to be yourself, Leo. But maybe this is a, a time for you to get back to fun. Um, certainly you could use a little fun, Leo, and to re nourish the fire because you're a fire sign and a Leo that is burnt out is a really sad Leo. Make sure you're not burnt out this season, Leo. Virgo. Virgo. So Sag is an, what's called an angular sign for you. So the sun has now crossed into the second was a quadrant of your of your personal zodiac wheel and this is the time where it's about home it's really focusing on your home environment the past memory family parents um your, your even your immediate family and really putting down roots over the next uh four weeks or even tending to existing roots so this might be the season when you move or, or when something comes up between you and a family member, or maybe you even start a family during this season. Jupiter is in your relationship sign. It's turning direct. So there's this interplay between you and other people, family and other people. And this could mean different things with different Virgos. This could mean like you start a household with somebody. There's the, the start of a relationship. Somebody moves in start of a family, this birth of a child. But for other Virgos, it's like looking at relationship and how relationship connects to that sense of safety, stability, security, being taken care of emotionally. Are you being taken care of emotionally, Virgo? That's the thing about being a Virgo. Sometimes you give and you give and you give and it creates a little bit of an imbalance. So use this season to put things back into balance to make sure that you are getting your needs met Take care of your home, take care of relationships. Um, Mercury, which is your planet, it's already in Sag. It's, you know, kind of, I think it spends another couple of weeks in Sag before going into Capricorn in like, I think the second week of December. So really focus on the things that are important. Um, this is, this is a new moon that's really hitting on three of the pillars of your life and let's not forget that mars is in gemini your career sign so it's a busy time for you virgo and um but at the you know even if it's busy and there's a lot of demands on you just make sure you're getting your needs met leo not leo jeez 
Libra, the other L word, uh, Libra. So Libra, this is my dog. Uh, let me get my, my, my mic back. Libra. So Sagittarius is your third sign. So this is the season for you to get curious, to focus on education, information, ideas, communication. Uh, Libra, you have something called a flip chart. So normally Aries is rising in the zodiac or Aries is the first sign in the zodiac, but in a Libra chart, Libra is the first sign. So we have an opposition. Anyway, so having Sagittarius as the third, you know, Libra is a sign that's really, uh, it expresses its voice around these, these themes from justice. And Libra is a sign that is sort of really motivated by what is fair, what is equal, whether it's equality in relationships or sort of, sort of a sense of equality in general or that sense of justice in the world. And so maybe you're having a lot of conversations that are very motivated around what is right and what is wrong. Maybe you have a lot of opinions right now, Libra. Mars is in your ninth sign. So there's this dynamic push and pull that's happening this season between your sign of faith and truth and meaning, and but also the sign of information, ideas, and communication. It's probably going to be a buzzy and a busy next uh, four weeks. Uh, Jupiter is playing off of this, uh, this new moon, and it's in your... I six sign am I doing that right uh, yes it's in your six sign so how do you maybe you have a lot of big ideas Libra um, and maybe you're really bouncing off ideas with people and that's one of the things that you do as a Libra but how do you make things concrete and real and Jupiter turning direct is sort of this you know stake in the ground that's saying okay let's let's take all this information ideas let's take these opinions and actually do something about it. So there's a need to sort of start a project or even maybe even return to a project. That's the thing. Jupiter was in Pisces for a period of time in 2021 and also a period of time from the end of 21 and up until I think it was May 13th, I believe, of 2022. Could have been May 11th or 13th, can't remember. So how do you really focus on your human life, making things real, making things grounded, coming up with a system and a framework, a plan, or even a schedule on, on how to make these ideas real? But this is a season and also a new moon that really does focus on education. And this includes you educating other people, you focusing on your education, or maybe you're speaking, doing a lot of public speaking, um, maybe you're even sharing your ideas, and maybe even doing a lot of travel right now, Libra. With Venus also in Sagittarius, you're right in the mix because Venus is your planet. So again, you probably have a lot to say over the next four weeks. Scorpio, so just coming off of your birthday season, how did you do this pretty heavy duty eclipses? Um, it's because these eclipses weren't just in your sign of Scorpio or even your opposite sign of Taurus. These are also eclipses that picked up on the energies of Saturn and Uranus. If, if October and November weren't pivotal, it certainly planted the seeds for something pivotal. That's the thing about eclipse energies. It's sort of plants a seed and then there's certain moments where that seed becomes active really pay attention to the events of december because that's one of the times in which the seed can take root or start to blossom and maybe even as you go into the end of january and february because that's when we get to the midpoint of the eclipses but i'm getting ahead of myself that said, Sag season, Sagittarius is your second sign. And the second sign is like, okay, we've started this new personal uh, season. We, you know, the sun has come back to where it was and now it's left Scorpio. But we now need to kind of focus on the things that really are important. And, and that's typically our material life. We are material beings. We have a material body, but we are also spirits in a body. But we have to make sure that our material life is taken care of. So it's focusing on money, income, resources, spending, um, investments, maybe even looking at the things are like, what's a value, what's not a value, and, and sort of getting your material life rock solid. Sometimes that means making purchases or 
doing, um, you can do exchange or bartering. There's a lot of different ways in which we accumulate the physical resources that we need, but really getting clear about what are the resources that we need, what's important, because what's important for us may not be important for somebody else. That said, Mars, your planet, it continues to be in your eighth sign. So there's going to be this dynamic energy between this new moon of November 23rd, also getting into the full moon, I think it's December 7th, the full moon in Gemini, of this sort of like what's important and what's a value and sort of maybe, you know, as you go through a lot of these deeper emotional experiences with Mars in your eighth, getting very clear about what you need and what you don't need, what you'll, you know, give money, time and money for and what you won't give time and money for. Jupiter plays off of this new moon and Jupiter's in your fifth. So there's a, this dynamic energy between the sense of self and like what is you and what is not you. And, and it's sometimes the times in which you devalue yourself or go against yourself. Or maybe it's this really uh, powerful, potent energy where you want to like bring something into material you know, reality. Maybe this includes work and sort of making something real. Um, you know, the sun is in this mix and the sun is a career planet for you. So this could be a season, especially as you go into December. I realize it's kind of a weird season because we're getting to the end of the year, but maybe you really want to make something real and make something manifested. So you certainly have the power and the fuel for it, Scorpio. Sagittarius, happy birthday, Sagittarius. If your birthday is on the new moon, plus or minus a couple of days, so this includes my, my November 22nd Sagittarius is even, you know, a couple of days after that. Um, this is a new moon where it's about a new beginning and uh, a new, new, or rather a new year that's about a new beginning. So that's, if, if, of course, if you're born on the 23rd or the 22nd or 24th or maybe even the 25th, um, it's a powerful new moon that really sort of sets you off on a new course. It's about home and family. It's about relationships. And it's like, how do you, and that's the thing, like Jupiter is in Pisces right now and it is wrapping up its time in Pisces. It'll be out of Pisces on December 28th. But Jupiter, if, if you go back and connect the dots, and we'll come back to this next year, Jupiter has been laying a path for Saturn. And Jupiter, it gives us a sense of hope and, and, and maybe wish, and you know, so there's the sense of wishing and hoping, I think, with Jupiter in Pisces. And Saturn, as, as much as Saturn has a reputation, Saturn wants to make these things real. So with you know Jupiter turning direct in your fourth, it's like, what is your hope for family and home and let's say the future and, and relationship? And, and, and these are three of the four pillars of life. You know, you, you, Sagittarius, Pisces, home and family, having a home, having a sense of connection and relationship. And then the other pillar would be career. So and career, you know, not 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 having that right now, but this is a time for you to really focus on the things that are important and um, you know, be very self-motivated. You know, Mercury is in Sag Sagittarius right now. Mars is in Gemini right now. But at the same time, really planting down some roots, focusing on home and the family. Even if your birthday is not in the beginning of the sign, take this energy of the new moon and really, you know, what do you want for the coming year? I think Jupiter in a way, and I do not like to overpromise Jupiter, I, but however, I do have a soft spot for Jupiter in Pisces. Um, you know, how do you really look ahead towards the coming year and pray? And I, and I, and I mean that as a sort of a neutral word, but what word do we use when we sort of ask for grace, ask for help, ask, wish and hope for a better year. And so maybe use the new moon to write down some intentions or some wishes, some hopes, and sort of looking at these major themes in your life about what you want to build going into 2023. Because when Saturn goes into Pisces in March of 2023, it's the start of a major chapter for you. But I'm getting ahead of myself, Sagittarius. Capricorn, 
so you know saturn is rounding out its time in your second sign i know i say this every week it continues to be about money resource income spending getting very clear about what is important what is of value and even focusing on themes of self-worth and value that said sagittarius is your 12th sign so even though your 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 planet saturn is in this very material place in your personal astrology sagittarius represents the end of your personal zodiac calendar it represents what you can't see about life the non-manifested world dreams intuition but it's also a place where there is no manifested world so maybe you're seeing a little bit of a push and pull between what is real and, and manifested and sort of you know rock solid as a as a, as a capricorn capricorn's all about the things that are rock solid in life but the, what about your spirit life what about truth and meaning what about that inner search having this new moon and this is the new moon that precedes capricorn season so this is a four week period where you are rounding out your personal calendar year it's about inner search inner meaning reflection it's about letting things go this is an energy or rather a, a point in your astrology that picks up on the energy of pisces even though pisces is not this part of your chart and pisces is two fish swimming in two different directions and that's the reminder that the material goes back to the material and the spirit goes back to the spirit and then when you go through this 12th house or you know i call it the 12th room transits it's like you have to be very aware of the things that are coming with you into this new part of your you know in this next chapter of your life and the things that are not coming with you into this next chapter of your life the things that are material and the things that are immaterial the things that are matter and the things that are spirit so use this time to soul search and to reflect and to tend to your spiritual being as much as saturn in your second is getting you to tend to your material being right now your material life at the moment uh that said jupiter is turning direct in your third so there's this interplay between the intuitive voice the intuitive mind and like how do you consult that how do you listen to your intuitive mind that said mars is in your six and so you have a lot of energy right now and maybe you're focusing a lot about projects and getting things done but you have to figure out what is the bridge between heaven and earth this lunar month capricorn aquarius Aquarius, how'd you fare this uh, this eclipse season? Um, I think I said this for Leo, and I'll say it for you. Eclipses, they plant a seed. And even though we're coming out of eclipse season, we're going to keep revisiting these eclipse points, especially throughout December and even into the new year. These eclipses were really putting the focus on your professional life, your sort of the roles and duties and responsibilities that you play in the world, but also on your home life and maybe even potential changes in your home life if there haven't been changes already. So Saturn, your planet, it continues to be in your sign of Aquarius. It's in the home stretch. It's going to leave Aquarius in March, just FYI. So what is that, four, four or five months left uh that said sagittarius is your 11th sign so the 11th is sort of meaning that we're starting to get to the end of our personal calendar year you've left scorpio scorpio is your career sign your 10th sign the highest point in your astrology and now you're starting to prepare for what is next and maybe you're asking yourself especially after this new moon what's next where am i going like what's the what's the next horizon that i want to travel towards this is this is the thing where we see that uh sagittarius and aquarius actually have a lot in common so this is a time when maybe you are thinking of these larger let's say philosophical ideological what is right what is wrong in the world focusing on your community friendships social circle but there is that sense of truth and justice about this time and sort of this reminder that uh you know sagittarius but more more specifically aquarius it's a very intellectual sign so maybe this is a season for you to to nourish the intellect that said jupiter 
it's turning direct in your second sign of money and income and sort of looking at when you look out at the world and when you sort of think about, okay, what's the future that I want to plan for? Jupiter turning direct in Pisces is saying it needs to be important. It has to feel a sense of value and purpose and mission. Jupiter, especially Pisces, is a very value, mission, and purpose-driven sign. It's not about just making money. It's like I tell people, when you have Pisces or even Neptune as part of your money story, which you inherently do, Aquarius, you have Pisces as your second sign. I don't care if they pay you a million dollars if you are the most powerful person in the world. First, it has to feed your soul. So that's the thing, looking towards the future, but also making sure that your future is in a way aligned with your deeper values and deeper convictions. You do have Mars in your fifth, so there's sort of having to navigate the space between the individual and how and what maybe like your wants, your needs, and how you want to express yourself, but also the needs and wants of something greater than you, whether it's the collective, whether it's humanity, society, or even something beyond that. Finally, Pisces. So Pisces, here we are, we've come to the end of the zodiac, you are the, the bridge between one life and the next life, you are the last water sign, you are the amniotic waters that prepare us for something new, which is symbolized in Aries, the first sign of the zodiac. That said, this is a busy lunar month for you. This sort of moves off the emphasis of the eclipses. And the eclipses, not that the eclipses weren't doing anything for you. They just weren't having the same effect as they were, let's say, on other signs. So Sagittarius is your career sign. And this new moon says that over the next four weeks, your professional life, your duties and responsibilities in the world, your sense of ambition and direction. There's this is the the spotlights on it. There's an emphasis on it. So it's new beginnings. And maybe there's new beginnings in your professional life. Maybe it's a job change or something of going on in your career where it's a new beginning, a page turns. Then you have Jupiter. Uh, Jupiter is turning direct in Pisces. Hey, you're Pisces. So there's this interplay that's happening between career and the self. And you know, Jupiter coming direct, it is a big push. There, it's, an, it's an act of faith. You're leaping forward. You're going into the world. And I think that's the thing about Jupiter going through the first. It is the start of some bigger journey. And, and that's, a, you know, maybe you don't know this, but Jupiter takes 12 years, 11 and a half, we're being completely, you know, real. It takes 11 and a half years to go through the zodiac. So Jupiter in your sign, and, and since 2021, off and on, it's been the start of a 11 and a half, 12 year journey. That's the thing about these big journeys. It's really hard to, to sort of wrap our head around where they're taking us, but we still have to steer the ship. We still have to have a sense of direction, even if we course correct. So I think with all this emphasis on Sag, on Pisces, it talks about this journey that you're on that began in 2021 that you're, you've had to revisit, but you need to make sure that it's very much aligned with some sort of sense of mission, uh, passion, where do you want to go? What what's uh, what do you believe in? What's your truth? And so, it is an act of faith. It is an act of faith to really launch yourself towards something that you believe in, that your heart and your soul, and your, maybe even your spirit, is in. There is this dynamic interplay with Mars. Mars is down in Gemini, which it will be for, what, five more months, four more, whatever. Uh, Mars is really focusing on the home environment. And it's saying that as much as you are ready to launch yourself in the world and go after something and make that leap of faith, make sure that things are rooted and grounded and solid. Make sure you are well anchored. Or on another way of looking at it, make sure you're taking care of your inner needs you're tending to your emotional core. But this is a, a pretty dynamic new moon for you. It is playing off the energies of Neptune. And maybe that's why we really need to make sure that we are rooted and grounded because sometimes Neptune can like be like, yeah, you know, this is totally going to work out. And really in that sort of larger than life, a confidence of Sagittarius, um, which sometimes with Sag, it sort of like leaps without really fully thinking th things through. So I think this is say, say, okay, you know, it's great to have dreams. It's great to go after what you believe in and what you want. But first make sure that you're really 
rooted and anchored and grounded in yourself. So there you go. Uh, that's your look at the astrology of November 21st through 27th, 2022. That sounds like a lot of two, but anyway, tongue twister. So that's, you know, that's, that's what I got. Uh, happy, happy Thanksgiving. If you celebrate it, um, stay safe. I already saw two big accidents on 95 as, as I was driving down here. Um, but uh, of course, you can follow me online at empoweringastrology.com. You can sign up for my newsletter. I sent out a newsletter every first thing Monday morning. If you just want to like a jump on the week, uh, you can book a consultation with me. I, I see some clients in the chat. Thank you very much for supporting my work. But it's 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 really uh, well, it's like it's an honor and a gift to be able to work with you all one on one. Um, you can also follow me online at Instagram. I'm on Spotify. Um, and yeah, there you go. Have a wonderful week. We will have surely something new to talk about next week as we go further into Sag season. So until then, take care. Bye-bye.